chap houses, um, talking about 3D printer, talking about <laughs> what I'm calling the MK Maker 1. Well, you've got to call things things, haven't you? Um, uh, lots of inspiration from other people, including um, uh, Tech2C and his Hypercube, massive uh, inspiration from that. Um, I've got a few different ideas. One of the things is I want a printer to look pretty. Um, so basically a group of, of us have sort of got together to come up with um, you know, some different ideas about design, uh, including sort of 3D printing quite a lot of it. Um, light Tech 2C using this lovely 2020 extrusion um, came up with this sort of, yeah, I think it's quite pretty that. I mean, it's quite wobbly at the minute. There's definitely going to be some gluing and stuff. Um, <clears> There's <throat> a lovely Spanish guy who also inspires me. Um, I, he inspires me partly because he's willing to make lots of mistakes and show us all the, the cock-ups. Um, you will never find us owning up to any mistakes whatsoever on this channel. Oh, <coughs> never mind. Um, <clears throat> moving on. So yeah, basically um, I was thinking about, partly just thinking about the cost of this stuff. This is not cheap. Um, my particular situation means that I don't have a job currently. Um, I lost my job through depression. Don't, worry, don't feel sorry for me. I'm getting over that. I'm victorious over that every day. But it does mean that my budget is really tight. I mean, literally it's from things like my kids give me money for birthday and Christmas and stuff like that. And so 160 quid is what's in the budget at the minute. That should increase as the year goes by. But it does mean everything, every penny counts. Well, this stuff is not cheap. This stuff is much cheaper. Printing out stuff uh, is much cheaper, especially if you've got a really good friend uh, who's actually behind the camera at the minute, who's willing to print out stuff for you. Because I don't own a 3D printer. That's why, you know, I want to get into it, but I don't own a 3D printer. So this stuff expensive, this stuff cheap. So trying to maximize the use of this stuff. So that, that was the sort of basic design. Found a way of getting a cube and getting these parts that sort of fit into the cube in a kind of interlocking way. Probably the best way to show you is to put these together. Or I could show you in on shape. So uh, these are the bits that uh, you could see I was um, linking together. So you got uh, these two identical pieces. They link together and they're held together by that, but they're held together really by the interaction of them all. I mean, um, it's as this piece slides in there, uh, and the other one slides in on top of there, In fact, you can see how all of the parts really line up very close and very tightly. Um, I find uh, generally if I point, leave a 0 0.02 gap around everything, uh, 0 0.02 mil, um, looks massive, doesn't it, when it's like that? But uh, uh, trust me, it's not when you actually put these things together. So yeah, that theory, that goes in there like that. <laughs> As you can see, it's like, ah, don't want to come in. So, my find is I've got Oh! <laughs> um, yeah, just try and get it in there in the end. Again, what we'll do is, uh, even, there we go, that's sort of going in. It's weird, because you want it to go in easy enough that that goes in there, and then that goes in. Again, get it the right way around, like that. And that's sort of nice theory, but in practice, getting it to fit. Keys, very important tool in a, you know, a workshop. 
Yellow bit, shouldn't I? <laughs> Good enough? See what's going? Yep. Yeah. 